Today I invite you to spend the Saturday with me. This is Saturday, the day I'm filming this. I'm just kind of piddling around the house. We're still getting everything settled because we moved recently and there's stuff everywhere, but it's a nice day outside. I've got the door open, I can hear the creek, and it's just lovely outside. I can see the blue sky and I can see everything greening out and I thought this would be a great day to just shoot a video and invite you to just spend a day with me. Whether maybe you watch this when you sit down in the evening or maybe you just turn on this video in the background as you're doing stuff on your Saturday. So what I need to do today is work on the kitchen because <laughs> I need to make Olive's food but I don't really know where my supplies are at to do that and I need to wash some dishes because I'm ashamed to say we've had some dishes in the sink for way too long and I don't know what else there's definitely some things I would like to do I would like to go outside I'd love to sit down and read a book maybe if I had some time of course I'm gonna go up and see Katie and the baby and dad Austin is actually hunting he's turkey hunting this weekend so I'm just kind of bashing it out <laughs> by myself I've got my comfy clothes on and I'm just enjoying this day and wanted to take you along with me. Okay, I decided first things first, I needed a snack before I started anything. <laughs> In this third trimester of pregnancy, the crazy hunger of the first trimester has kind of come back, but praise the Lord, it's not come back with nausea. I don't feel sick at my stomach, I just feel hungry a lot. And I gotta stop and eat. This is dates and almond butter. I had a friend who suggested eating this like as a replacement for sweets years ago and at first I was like I don't really know if I like the texture of dates but then I grew to love dates and almond butter and it's good for you and it's a really filling snack so I just eat this all the time. I've seen lots of recipes where people put different stuff in dates well, that looks pretty interesting. So now I actually hear the guys out front. Another thing that's happening today is they're taking off all the stuff from the house, like shelving and furniture we didn't want, so I guess I need to go meet them. They just have one more load. They had to take the wood and the metal separate. So all of the wood has already gone, and now they're just going to pick up the metal. And this is so nice. This is going to make it so much easier on us so we don't have to haul anything to the landfill. They're just taking it off. Very appreciative. just cleaned the sink and I used this power paste. I did a little spot test first to make sure it would be okay on the sink that it wouldn't hurt it, but it cleaned it really well. You have to comment below and let me know if anyone else has used power paste because it's a somewhat natural is cleaner, but it really seems to clean well. This is a really nice soap pump that Katie got for me. And I think the color will be real pretty by the sink and the wood. And I think I'm going to put dish soap in it because Austin really likes unscented stuff. And I kind of do too, to be honest. But especially when hunting season rolls around, he does not want to be using any scent. So I like having unscented stuff for him. And then I like the texture of this. Ooh, I just about made a mess there. I like the texture of this soap because... Some of the other hand soaps are too watery. They're nice, but then every single time you go to get the soap out, you end up spilling soap everywhere. <laughs> and it's so irritating. Yikes, may have to pour some of that into something else. I don't know if that's going to work. I'm actually about to wash some dishes that have been sitting in the sink for... I don't want to tell you how long. <laughs> so, I will actually take some off the top of that. And that can be my uh, soap for my dishwater. So this is going to be my very first time using this sink, which is exciting. 
I didn't really clean these off, so I might get them real quick because I don't want to have cleaned everything and not clean these stoppers. And what happened was we just kind of started putting dishes in the sink because, you know, getting a glass of water, whatever, but wasn't really ready to wash dishes yet because it didn't have the sink cleaned. It didn't have anything set up or anything like that. So I needed to remove all the glasses <laughs> so I could clean the sink to then wash the dishes. I know, it's kind of silly, but that's okay. This has been a big thing on my to-do list as of late, so that would be nice. This power paste, though, really works. Like I said, you just wet this thing, and then this rough texture, when you rub it in the bottom of the cleaner, it makes it foam up. I had on a pair of gloves earlier, but they kind of got wet, so I took them off. But this stuff's not hurting my hands, so I think it's probably fine. Sometimes you just gotta do the best you can do. So this is really exciting for me today because at our other house, I could not fill the sink with dishwater. For one, the sink was incredibly shallow, but there was a garbage disposal in that house, uh, in that sink, I mean, and it just, it backed up all the time. It was so aggravating and you could never actually fill a sink full of dishwater. So then you just had to stand here with a rag and wash each dish separately which was fine but that doesn't get them as clean at least in my experience as if you set them down in the dishwater and so sometimes i would pull uh clean dishes out of the cabinet and realize this is really not so clean it's very frustrating so this is exciting to be able to actually fill a sink with dishwater <laughs> Now, while that fills up, I actually have to find a dish rag. <laughs> we still have stuff strode out everywhere, and you don't, you just don't realize, oh, I want to wash dishes, I gotta find dish soap, I need a dish towel, I gotta have the dish drying rack set up, so I need to go in search of a dish rag. Okay, thankfully, that search was just across the room because I found one. This is one that Granny gave me recently. I think maybe a subscriber sent it to her. And she shared with me, so it's exciting. It's very beautiful. It's handmade. These are all my favorite drinking glasses. And this is one of my favorites in particular because this come from my great-grandma Gazzy's house. This was mama's grandma and so that's really special to have something that come from her house and i can remember visiting her house when i was little she died before i was born but i can remember visiting her house and it was this really neat old house and so when i'm washing these and i've got lots of other stuff from either her house or my grandma's house or even mom's house but when i'm washing those things it makes me think of that and it's just special it's just so incredibly nice to be able to wash dishes in a sink full of dishwater. <laughs> I just had no idea this would be so satisfying. I love it. I'm so thankful for this sink. Saturdays are always a great day to just catch up on laundry. We pretty much do, I feel like, a load every day or every other day. And even if they're small loads, I like to do it like that just to try to keep it from piling up and ever getting to that point where it's overwhelming. So the weekends, though, of course, are a great day to just keep it running because most of the time I'm here all day. I've got a lot of towels because a lot of these, uh, they're either bath towels or towels that we use to pack stuff with. So, I don't know, I'm just OCD, like my kitchen towels, if they were packed in a box with a lot of other random stuff, I just want to wash them, so. And then, I'm actually going to throw in some of my pajamas. And I think that's mostly it. I always try to look around and see if there's anything else that needs to be washed with the load I'm washing at the time. But I think that's pretty good. So this is something that I found recently. This is a, a homemade laundry soap that come uh, from a store here locally in town. And it's made with soap berries. 
And I'm not sure if soap berries and soap nuts are the same thing. I keep meaning to look that up and I haven't. But I've toyed with the idea of making my own laundry soap before and just have never got around to it. But I found this stuff and it really works. It cleans really well. So I've been using that. And then we also like to just use some kind of free and clear stuff. But I think today I'm going to use some of the homemade stuff. And it's like a tablespoon or two per load. That might have been a little more. I just kind of eyeball it. Only thing I don't like is that it gets on the bottle and then you have to wipe it off. But that's fine because I usually always have a towel here or a piece of clothing of some sort and I just wipe it off. And there's that. Olive is loving her fenced in area back here. She likes to sit in the sun. And you can see in this backyard, there's a lot of moss, so it's kind of a nice soft backyard. So she loves to just lay in the sun and look around. I've been seeing several caterpillars on this back porch in the last day or two, and that is always a sign that spring is on the way. So I always enjoy seeing those. I think I might have to take this off. <laughs> it's getting pretty warm. It's supposed to warm up today pretty good, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to maybe walk around the yard some and definitely show you the creek that's one of the best things about living here is just being right next to the creek it's so pretty oh <laughs> all of us doing some zoomies yeah are you doing zoomies girl so now i think i'm going to eat lunch and that kind of depends on the weekend and if austin's here if he's not here and he's gone hunting, then I don't usually cook anything super big. I just maybe cook something for me, maybe have leftovers, maybe just eat a sandwich. It just kind of depends. But on this given day, particular day, while we're still trying to get everything moved into the kitchen, I have been going up to my parents' house and eating some meals there because we just don't have everything kind of settled in the kitchen ready to cook yet. I'm hoping that by today or tomorrow, I will have everything ready. But I'm thinking maybe I will just head up there and see what everyone's doing and maybe just eat a sandwich for lunch today. Okay, <laughs> time for lunch, I'm hungry. Whew. So I've got an egg sandwich and then these are chips from Thrive, Thrive Market and they're made with avocado oil. And I cut up an apple. So, pretty basic, but pretty good. And like I said, if it's just me, then sometimes I take a break from cooking and I don't cook anything real elaborate if Austin's not here. I've got Olive right here. <laughs> My little obedient beggar. I've got some extra eggs left in that pan though, so I'm probably going to get roast to her. One thing for sure on Saturdays is I just try to take things 
slow and easy and not get in a rush, even if there's little things around the house I want to do. I'll try to just kind of be lazy about it and just be slow and enjoy the day. So today, Dad is mowing and weed eating the yard. Katie's actually feeding the baby right now. And then at the time of filming this video, Mama is with her mama, Granny, in the hospital because she's been sick. So, I'm going to give you some eggs, baby. I'm almost done here. I'm going to give all of my extra eggs. And then, I'm going to go in search of something sweet. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I've got my sweets fixed. These are cookies, I think, that also come from Thrive Market. Grain-free cookies. These are Mexican wedding cookies. They're supposed to just be healthier, but they're so good. Mm. I love these cookies. You can also get these on Amazon. They also make just a regular shortbread version of this and then a chocolate version. I don't really like chocolate cookies. I'm kind of weird. I don't like chocolate in cookie form. Besides one kind of chocolate cookies, which is the no-bake cookies. Which my mom has a video, so I'll leave that in the description, the link. And I like chocolate in candy form. But I don't like it if it's been baked or if it's like chocolate ice cream. But anyways, these cookies are really good. Alright. Now I need to clean up the kitchen. And then probably go back home and keep working on my own kitchen. <laughs> Before I go back down to my house to make all this food, Katie will show me her poppies out here. Put all that lettuce looking stuff in the bottom. And that's gonna be poppies. Yay! Like this stuff. Yep, that'll all be poppies. Wow. Yeah. Look at all that asparagus coming up. Holy cow. These things are good to just eat raw. Huh. They're good. Tastes like a raw green bean. Binks, what are you doing? What are you doing, little boy? Hey, Binky. Hey, Binky. Oh, my goodness. Do Before I go back in the house, I just want to show you how beautiful this creek is. It's just so sunny here and nice and the sky's so blue. It's been pretty windy, but it's just so nice and I love to be outside when the weather's nice like this. So I wanted to take you along. This creek is so peaceful.
Now that I've come home, it's time to make Olive's food. I switched over the clothes to the dryer. And now I'm going to make Olive some dog food. I've got a whole video on this and the recipe I use, so I will link to that below if you're interested. I like to make her food on the weekends if I can. Saturday's a good day to make it. <laughs> I've got my Christmas towel here <laughs> under my cutting board. It's just such a pretty towel. I find myself reaching for it even when it's not Christmas. I usually put some canned pumpkin in here, but I can't find it at the moment. But the last thing I'm putting in here is the meat. And this is deer meat that Austin harvested. And it's just ground from the processor. While Olive's food is making, I'm kind of getting a little bit more unpacked and put into the kitchen. And I think, maybe at least for now, I'm going to set my fruit bowl right there. And I have got my frog scrubby holder. I love this thing. I'm going to set it kind of right back there in the corner. Yeah, that fits perfectly. So you can see that's why it has <laughs> taken us so long to kind of get the kitchen how we want it because we want to line the drawers and as you can see hardware is not back on yet but this is going to be the silverware drawer and I've got some silverware wash so I figured I better get the silverware container back in here so that way I have somewhere to put it when it's dry. What's nice about this drawer is this is going to fit in here this way and then there's going to be all this extra space on either side for maybe some extra knives or something like that. This drawer is a lot wider than our old silverware drawer. I went ahead and washed this because these things get dirty and there's a lot of stuff as we've moved. I'm like this is a good time before I kind of unpack this and put it out for good to just go ahead and clean it. So now I have to go hunt our silverware <laughs> and see if I can get it in here. Thankfully, that was not too hard to find. I'm not sure if this is all of it or not, but I think it's most of it, so that is good. Yeah, that just don't really fit. Well, now it'd fit right there, though, so I could put those there and put the knives there. I don't know. Let's see if the other ones fit. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this because I feel like maybe this is safer. So the knives aren't just out in the open. And then we'll still get our sheath for this one. We could put it in the back though. So it's not right there. I think this is pretty good. This is all I can think of that needs to go in here at the moment. I may find something else as I unpack, but it looks pretty good. It'll be really nice once we get our handle on. I've got another drawer here that I'm going to go ahead and do. And this is going to be the one for other cooking utensils besides silverware. I guess that's eating utensils, but these will be the ones that we cook with a lot and use a lot. So I'm going to put them right by the stove. I think it's nice to line drawers with this kind of stuff because I feel like it just protects them. And then if something ever got too dirty, you could just pull this whole thing out and get rid of it. Yeah. It's pretty good right there. There's actually a little part right there. That will trim off. And there we go. I'm going to put those in there for now. And then I'll see what else I can find <laughs> later on that will go in there. Oh, 
I've got to sit down and take a break. <laughs> and I'm going to have some popsicle time in the kitchen. On my mom's channel, her and my dad do popsicle time or popsicle chats. So I'm going to have my own popsicle in the kitchen here. Mmm. Mmm, good. These are the outshine popsicles. We just get them from the grocery store. This one is coconut. I love coconut. My dad does not because he says he does not like the texture of coconut in the uh, popsicle itself. He likes the flavor, but just not the little pieces. And I appreciate all of y'all coming along with me. It's just nice to sit down and visit. We love reading comments and corresponding with people. And, and so I feel like this was just kind of nice to bring you along with me and we can enjoy the day together. And you have to comment. <laughs> Let me know when you're watching this, if it's a Saturday or not, and what you like to do on Saturdays. Now that I'm done with my popsicle, I want to show you some books I got recently. So if you've been on the channel, you know that I love to read. And I, I kind of have got back into reading lately. And so naturally, <laughs> that's made me want to buy more books. So me and mom were in a thrift store recently. And we actually did a video, and it's on her channel, so I'll link to that in the description. And I bought a few books. I've kind of been trying to restrain myself to not buy too many books, just because you can only read one at a time. And I know with baby coming up, being born in June, I'm not going to have a lot of time to read. So I just feel like I don't need to be buying a ton of books right now. But it's nice to get books from a thrift store because they're so cheap. And also, this thrift store uh, goes to benefit, I can't remember if it's domestic violence or, ho or homeless. I can't remember, but I, I always love giving them my <laughs> money because I know that it's going to support people. So... These are the books that I got. Welcome to Beach Town by Susan Wiggs. These are all authors that I, well, save for one that I've never read before. This says, When We Believed in Mermaids, Barbara O'Neill. You have to comment and tell me if any of you have ever read any of these books. The Clover House, Henriette Power. And then I've read several of her books before. This is by T, T. Greenwood, Nearer Than the Sky. So, I look forward to reading some of these. I will say I am picky with books, to be honest. I'm pretty picky because I do not want bad language. I do not want explicit content. I don't want anything super violent. And I can't tell you how many times I have picked up a book before and within the first couple paragraphs, they're using curse words. I just put it down. I'm just not going to read a book like that. It just frustrates me and to be honest makes me angry because <laughs> I look at reading as an escape like reading fiction as an escape so I don't want bad language I don't want explicit stuff I don't want violence so I genuinely hope that none of these books have that I read all the back backs of them none of them seem like they had inappropriate content but if they do I would definitely pass it along because I don't like to read books like that sometimes I will specifically get christian fiction because then it's a guarantee that none of that stuff is going to be in there but it kind of depends if i see books like especially at thrift stores that i think are look pretty good and look pretty clean and then authors that i've read before if i know i've read their books and it was clean then i know that their next ones will probably be good to read too so i will look forward to reading these and it's just so pretty isn't it pretty just to see the spines of book and spines of books and the covers? I just think it's nice. Okay, before I sign off, I want to share something that I read in a devotional this morning and something that a friend told me recently. So at the time of filming this, my grandma is sick and she's in the hospital. And of course, that's stressful, it's worrisome. And 
if I'm just being <laughs> completely honest, which I like to do on this channel, I want to be <laughs> genuine and honest. Things have just been slightly overwhelming. The more pregnant I get, the tireder I get. And we are incredibly and deeply thankful and just blessed that we've been able to move houses. But it's a lot, just to be honest. And I just tire out fast. I think a lot of it for me is just mentally I'm used to just being able to go, 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 go. And I can't do that when I got a big belly <laughs> and I tire out kind of fast. And, you know, I'm worried about my grandma because this exact time last year, our other grandma was very sick and things happened very fast and she passed away by the summer. So I just got kind of a lot on my mind if I'm being honest. And I don't want to complain though, because I know that my problems just I mean it's not even comparable to things that other people face to things that people comment on the channel because we encourage people to share so that we can pray for you so I don't want to complain but I want to be honest in that I've just been a little overwhelmed lately so one thing I wanted to share was this morning I was reading in this devotional. I talked about this devotional in a recent video. This is a really good one. I'll leave the link in the description below if you're interested. This lady has a real talent for boiling down very powerful spiritual truths in just a few sentences or maybe even one. So I won't read the whole thing, but this devotional is titled The Good Shepherd. So this is comes from John chapter 10 where Jesus is talking to the disciples about being a shepherd and wow what comfort you can find from that chapter the whole book of john but john chapter 10 has just got a lot of comfort in there but i wanted to look there was there was a couple of sentences here that i really wanted to share in this devotional she's talking about a hike she signed up to go on this hike it was the advanced hike and it was just really hard and maybe more than she <laughs> bargained for so she's using this in the, as an example. And so she says, my distorted view of reality was shaped by my irrational fear of being left behind. So talking about being left behind on this high control based on my inability to keep up. But Jesus, isn't it always but Jesus? He was reminding my heart that he is the great shepherd, one who pursues lost sheep. So just that alone, God pursues us. It's not just us needing to pursue Him. He is pursuing us on a daily basis, every minute, because He loves us. And she goes on to say, Do I believe that Jesus cares more for me than for our desired destination? That is strong, because we all have desired destinations, right? For her on this specific day, she was taking a hike, so there was going to be an actual geographical destination. Is the hope of his heart really to help me know him? Yes. If so, then my fear of being left behind, forgotten, or incapable is no longer on the table. This is huge what she's doing right there. She is doing like what I like to call leveraging power. Okay, if I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, I believe that he saved me from my sins, then my abilities, my worries, my fears shouldn't even be on the table anymore <laughs> and that's a spiritual truth that I think takes time and not just time but just dedication of every day trying to instill that spiritual truth in ourselves I am his sheep and he has already proven that he will lay down his life for mine that's huge just remembering that no matter what it is we face so if i'm feeling overwhelmed worried about my grandma what's gonna happen what if what if it turns into like it did with my other grandma or feeling tired and overwhelmed with how stuff you you name it you plug in whatever situation it is that you're facing knowing he's already proved that he'll lay down his life for us he's already proved that he pursues us that he loves us so shouldn't I be able to harness that power over anything that I'm facing? And it's easier said than done. It doesn't mean that it makes your situation go away. It doesn't make, mean that it makes you, those feelings go away. But focusing on that instead can 
break through the fear and anxiety and worry and whatever emotion it is that just locks you in the moment and just paralyzes you. And the more you focus on this, the, the less you feel that par paralyzing effect of whatever it is that's bothering you. His priority is my heart. His joy is my adoration. And his mission is that I would remain in step with him. Therefore, I do not need to be afraid. And that's one way that that we can find that happy place is reading devotionals. Of course, reading the Bible. You know, that's the most important. Devotionals don't replace reading the Bible. But surrounding ourselves with good material, peaceful material, whether that's you want to listen to sermons on YouTube or going to church and being with your church family, having a girls' night where you do a Bible study or going to a Bible study. I mean, whatever it is, surrounding yourself with basically as much Jesus as you can. And I think maybe I've spoke about all this on the channel, so maybe it's a repeat, but I think that it's worth repeating because like I said, it's not a once and done thing. You have to remind yourself of these truths. You have to wash yourself and renew your mind in these truths every single day. And when I recenter my heart and remember my role, my fears disappear. As long as I follow my leader, my passage and my victory have already been solidified. He just asked that I take one step at a time. Wow. That just blows my mind. It's not so much about our ability. <laughs> we don't need to focus on that. We need to focus on our leader. My passage and victory have already been solidified. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and you are saved and He comes and He lives in your heart, your passage and your victory, they've already been solidified no matter what happens to you. Nor height, nor depth, nor life, nor death. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And sometimes that's something that we just have to beat over our own heads and remind ourselves. And again, the more we do that, that worry, that fear, that anxiety, that am I really doing enough and that just almost sickening focus on trying to be sufficient and do it all disappears so that was very helpful for me this morning and like i said that john chapter 10 is just very powerful there's so many powerful truths in that about god being the good shepherd and it also got me to thinking a shepherd what does a shepherd do a shepherd's job is to protect the sheep at all cost what do the sheep do they don't have to do anything. They're just in the pasture, eating, hanging out. That's it. <laughs> they don't have to worry about a thing because the shepherd is there to watch them. And that's exactly how it can be for me and you. God is watching over us. We don't have to try to do everything in our own power. We can just simply be like the sheep. And verse 9 is so special. It sticks out to me. I am the door. This is Jesus talking. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find a pasture. I just think that's beautiful. And it's that simple. We don't have to overcomplicate it. And I love verse 14. I am the good shepherd and, and know my sheep and am known of mine. <laughs> There's an olive bump in the camera. He is the good shepherd and he knows his sheep. And then down here... In verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That implies that we can hear his voice. He knows us and we know him. It's just this beautiful picture of letting him be the shepherd, letting him not just uh, guide us and lead us, but that's what's best for us. Doesn't everyone in life just want to have someone who says, here, I'll worry about everything. Just go, go enjoy your life. I mean, I think anyone would want that. So that was just very powerful for me this morning when I just was seeking God and just needing some comfort with everything going on. And another thing that I wanted to share that kind of goes right along with this is recently I was talking to a friend and I really liked what he said. It really stuck with me. And sometimes I think God uses people to kind of plant messages and for that moment in time that you need. And I was talking to him about something and then he said, you know, our pastor says that if something is giving you maybe fear, but definitely not giving you peace, then that is a good kind of, 
he was talking about discernment. That kind of can help you discern whatever this is that's causing me a lot of fear and unrest. Maybe I need to remove that from my environment. And I know that that's not always possible. I know that sometimes in life we're in situations where we have to deal with something or someone or whatever it is that causes us unrest. But then it made me think, how many times do I purposefully or willingly do things that don't bring me peace? <laughs> I think that's worth thinking about. And so that goes back to exactly what I was saying, which is having a devotional, uh, obviously having the Bible first, church, uh, looking up sermons, whatever that is, that helps you stay grounded because that's God's word and God's truth. And of course, you have to be mindful about resources and who you always want to make sure what people are saying lines up with the Word of God. But that gave me kind of a lot of clarity. Sometimes we think, well, oh, I have to do this, or I have to watch this, or I should. And that doesn't always bring you peace. <laughs> you don't have to watch anything. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Really be mindful and be prayerful that God would help you seek what is going to bring you peace. Seek His will, His kingdom. So I hope maybe some of that was helpful. I just love to share what God's laying on my heart, what God's doing in my life. Uh, anything, you know, that help, helps me spiritually, I just want to share that and pass that along. And, and I want to be genuine and transparent and open about that too, that even though I have this YouTube channel, I mean, me and my sister, and, you know, you see a lot about us, but you don't see everything. And, and you know, we have struggles too. We don't have it all figured out. We don't know it all. <laughs> We're not perfect by any means. And I think when we share with each other like this, it it's good. It, it helps. It helps me. It helps you. We love corresponding with people in the comments. So, like we always say, feel free to drop prayer requests below because we pray for our YouTube family every day. And, and uh, I was just looking at some comments before I was doing this about, you know, people asking for prayer requests. And, you know, things just break my heart. You know, there's people who are sick and who need reconciliation in their families or their marriages. And, and this is wonderful for this to just be a space for us to pray for each other and lift each other up and and it can just be a corner of the internet where we can fellowship and and just be grateful for what God's blessed us for and and look to him so hopefully this little bit of devotional time was helpful I'm gonna sign off I think what's left for me on the agenda today is maybe if I have time maybe I'll read a little bit after supper I think for supper I'm going to have some leftover chicken that I made last night and maybe I'll just bake a little potato and do some kind of vegetable real quick and just kind of hang out the rest of the evening. I might edit this video <laughs> or I might not. Uh, I might uh, watch TV. I don't know. I like to watch the shows that are like Caribbean life, Mediterranean life. It's people hunting houses like in the Caribbean or Mediterranean or on the beach somewhere. I just think that's fascinating because it's so different from where we live. So I might watch that. Probably just going to hang out with Olive. Feed her, eat supper, and take a shower at some point. I might fold the clothes in the dryer. I might leave them until tomorrow to fold. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> but I appreciate you coming along with me. I enjoy just these lazy Saturdays of just kind of piddling around, maybe doing a few things, but nothing rushed. Of course, I always miss Austin when he's not here, but he has such a good time hunting with his dad, and I'm so grateful that he can do that. So happy that he's having a good time, but I'll be happy to see him tomorrow when he comes back. As always, thank you for watching. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. God bless you. God keep you, and I'll see you on the next video. We need to get you out of the sun, little girl. We need to get you out of the sun, little baby. Come here. I need to shut this door so it's a quick cooling the outside.